Hello Akuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiker Application Staff, another video in the series of getting to know your OSP P300M control. In this particular video we'll be focusing on setting work offsets manually. For this demonstration we're going to assume that my machine does not have a spindle probe, an electronic spindle probe to help me set work offsets, so I'm going to have to do this manually. If I look inside my machine, you'll notice that I've got a block of material set up in a vise and I've got an edge finder or a reference tool in the spindle ready to go. So from my main operating tab I want to find in the upper right hand corner the work setup tab. This is displaying our work offsets and as previously mentioned in some of these videos you'll notice that one of them is yellow that means that that is our current active work offset. There it's displayed right here as if the big yellow bar wasn't enough to remind you. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to select the individual work offset that uh, I want to set in this demonstration. So let's go with work zero number one. My first method would be the uh, most obvious way which would be to go into MDI and command G15 H1. But Akuma likes to make our life easy so by simply touching the work zero column that uh, that I want to make active I can then use F5 select 0 it'll ask for confirmation and if I say OK it now selects that as my active work coordinate It now shows it in my display and the work coordinate relative position is sitting in the, uh, the digital readout so let's take a look inside our machine again <clears throat> we know that this edge finder needs to be spinning before we touch the part so I want to fire up the spindle. Normally I like to have my edge finder spun up around 1200 RPM. It's a matter of preference, but because this machine has door interlocks, 800 RPM is the maximum RPM that I can run with the door open. If I choose to run with the door closed, I can still execute this at a normal spindle RPM, but let's just use my 800 just to be happy. So now my spindle is rotating at 800 RPM by clicking over into manual mode and sticking my head in the machine. I'm now ready to move the edge finder up against the surface that I want to measure. Now I'm going to, for the sake of this, um, for this demonstration, I'm going to use the upper left hand corner of my block for my work zero. So we'll call that X zero, Y zero. And the first X axis that I want to touch off is going to be my X. So in manual mode, I could either use the manual pulse generator or the jog feed buttons or a combination of the two. So for instance, there we go. Well, let's move our X over out of the way and then I'll bring my Z down. And now that I'm close, I'm going to switch over into handle mode by turning it on and now I can jog, uh, move the manual pulse generator slowly moving the machine until the tool makes contact, the, the edge finder makes contact with the part. So now as you can see, let's see if I can rotate that a little bit, there we go. My, tool, my edge finder has made contact with the part and I know that uh, currently, because this is a standard edge finder, I'm exactly 100 thousandths away from the edge of my part. By coming back over to my uh, primary operating screen, by touching the operations button right here, now I highlight the axis that I want to measure, and I know that currently I am 100 thousandths on the negative side of where, uh, where the edge of my part is. So by highlighting the X category and touching Cal and putting in the current location of, of my tool, minus 0.100 thousandths and pushing the enter button, now it has put in the current location of the machine and you notice that my DRO has updated. So now I'm sitting at minus 0.1. Let's go back over to our collision avoidance screen and we could do the same thing with the other, uh, the other axes, let's move back in. Oh, Got to turn off my pulse generator. We'll move back in the Y direction. Move over in the X. And bring our Z down. 
right, turn on our pulse generator. We'll do the same thing with the Y. And there we made contact with the part. Come back to our main operating screen. And this time we'll calibrate where we are, which is positive 0.1. And currently we are sitting at positive 0.1. Excellent. So that's our X and the Y. That was very simple. It's it's very similar with all machine tools. But let's uh, let's do a couple of uh, a couple of interesting things that uh, not a lot of people know about. Let's talk about uh, what if I wanted to make the uh, make the exact center of the block uh, my work zero. In theory, I could touch one edge and then use some measuring devices to find the um, uh, find the center, but that wouldn't be utilizing all of Akuma's little fancies. So let's go ahead and try that on for size. I'm going to basically repeat the process that I did a moment ago. I'm going to move my X to a clearance, bring it down, now come over and make contact. Ooh, got to move my Y a little bit. There we go. Now I made contact with the part, but I want to have the exact center line of this block. So I'm going to find a soft key that says actual position enlarge. This uh, enlargement screen has my relative coordinate on it and I have the ability to set that relative coordinate. So if I say this is my X0, now my relative position is set to 0. And I can, let's go back to our collision avoidance, retract the Z, move over in X, and drop down in Z and come touch the other side. There we go. Now coming back to my relative position, actual position in large, there is my relative measurement. And here's a nice little trick that not a lot of people know about. I know that the center of the block is what I want to use as my center point. So in my X, I'm going to set that to seven point 1816 divided by 2. So now I just set my relative position screen so that it will be 0 at the center of the block. I can retract my tool and now I'm going to go back over to my relative screen and I'm going to make that 0 out. See how close I can get it with uh, without having an actual pulse generator. Excellent. Kick it down, and now I'm set to my zero point, which is exactly centered on the block. There we go. Go back to the machine. You see the tools right in the center. That's where I want my X offset. So if I go over to my work setup screen, highlight my X and just say calibrate zero because I'm sitting right at the, the, the position for my, um, for my zero point and push enter. And now that's the exact center of my block. The last thing we need to do is find the Z position for the, um, uh, for the top of the material. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use a reference tool, a tool that already has a known value, a known height to it. I like to use one of these little guys from uh, this company is called Mara Tool. Find them on the web. These tools are not expensive and they are very handy, not just for setting a Z0 like we're about to do on our machine, but you can also use them to calibrate your spindle probe and touch probe if you happen to have one. So now I've installed it into my machine and I'm ready to set my Z position. So I will go into manual mode and I will come down and touch the top of the part with my 
tool of known value. In this case, the Mara tool is exactly four inches long. That makes my life super easy. So now I'll go over to my operations screen, highlight the Z category, and I will calibrate where the Z axis is in relation to my top of uh, material, which we know is exactly four inches away because that's the length of the tool. Now I've set X, Y, and Z, and I'm ready to rock. If you have any questions about this process, please feel free to reach out to your local Gossiger application staff. We're always here to help.